Hello everyone. How is everyone on today? Just listening to a few people, um, you know, and just reading some posts on YouTube. And, you know, I would like to say this. It's really sad when you have people coming out um, bashing uh, Mr. Kelly's defense team, mainly Jennifer, bashing, and always have something negative to say when it doesn't go their way. And there's one particular person that constantly does it, and I, I don't follow her, but I've heard her post, I've seen her post, uh, I've seen her videos where, you know, someone else might have posted it or they're doing commentary on it. And it's like everything that supporters have done, you know, people that really care about injustice and, and they want to fight against it. This person always is so negative. She's always so negative, like she can do it better, like she's smarter than everyone else. And it only fall, it only comes down to being a narcissist. This is a seriously narcissist. Whether she's been diagnosed as this, this person or not, she's a narcissist. But to always bash anyone that have tried to support whatever way it's been, whether it's boots on the ground, marching, protesting, rallying, showing up, donating, doing commentary, breaking down, you know, uh, the, the transcripts or breaking down, you know, the lies or whatever. This person is never satisfied. And I believe that people need to stop giving in to negativity and giving in to people like this because you have to see people like this. It's like if you knew someone in your life and you said, man, they never find the good in anything. Those are people that have really serious issues. When you can never find the good in anything, you have a problem yourself. And somewhere you, you, uh, something's failed you in your own life that you can never see the good in other people. And the thing about this, R. Kel the R. Kelly, uh, you know, this recent, you know, trial that he went through, no one is like, you got to see the good in the seven that, that he was found not guilty of. You have got to see the good in that. We know that he's up against odds. We know the cases are complex. There's a lot of players involved, a lot of corruption, uh, even within our own judicial system. The, and, you know, the government, uh, the uh, some people on YouTube that, you know, are trying to put cases on other people, making up lies about other people, sending in documents when they have background problems themselves, when their background is got, it has blemishes and they've made mistakes and they're, they're crooks and criminals and things like that, uh, you know, and getting out of jail early. It is so much going on on YouTube uh, when it comes down to these people that are playing a part or have played a part. And when you go back and look at the other people that have done interviews and, and lied and went around lying for decades and years on this man. And people want to talk so negative about him not getting found not guilty on all of the counts. Well, nobody is God. Not one person is God. And, that, and I'm speaking even including me. We're not God. We can pray, we can talk about it, we can do everything we can, and it can still go another way than we want it to, because we know what to expect a lot of times, but it can go another way, because we're not God, and God is the one that has the final say, and it's his time, in his time, he's going to do that new thing for Mr. Kelly, he's going to do a thing, a new thing, how many of you all have waited when you've been through some stuff and you were waiting for God to change some things, to bring a miracle, his divine hand upon you. How many of you have waited and God did that new thing and you were able to rise up and above your circumstances and you were able to move forward in your life and, and, and there was a turnaround. We have to trust God. If you are a believer, trust God. Because none of them that I can recall, not Bonji, not Mr. Kelly, not none of the supporters, none of us to speaking out against injustice, none of us are God. None of us are God. And God does have the final say. Now we know man can do some stuff, but God only allow, God will allow Satan 
like he allowed Satan in Job's life. Have you considered my servant Job? Now, some people might not consider R. Kelly to be a servant, but I believe R. Kelly is a servant. And God is calling him back, reconciling him back to him to be the servant that he expects him to be. This man is talented. This man, God blessed him, blessed him with a gift that can help many people around the world. And when we really get deep down in it, he is a servant of God. And we don't know the circumstance. We don't know what's going on between God and R. Kelly. We don't know. But we do know that we serve a mighty God and none of us down here is God. We also know that he has a good defense team working on his behalf. And she did do the best she could. And, and there were people saying, well, why would you celebrate? He's still in jail. Let people celebrate what they believe because you don't know who they're communicating with. Maybe the God they serve, the almighty one has put it in their spirit to thank God for the small things, to thank God for what he is doing. Because this man could have got charged for every count. It could have went exactly like the New York case and it didn't. And I got to thank God it didn't. I'm going to be honest. I got to thank God that it didn't. But for the people that's being negative, if you will, because we know some that's extremely negative, one just really. But for the people that's being negative and saying she didn't do this, she didn't do that, she didn't do this, she didn't do that. Did you all put her up on a pedestal? Because I don't put people on pedestals. Because... They're not God. Nobody is perfect. We all have faults. We all have mistakes. We all have blemishes. God created us like that. He created us like that. And he knows our mistakes and our faults and our blemishes. He knows it. But he still loves us. He wants the best for us. He cares about us. He cares about the suffering of his people. And he said the righteous will suffer. He said that. The righteous will suffer for Christ's sake, for his sake. The righteous is going to suffer. He said that. And we can't let people out here, negative people control our emotions. Can't let negative people control us. See, Satan wants us to believe that what we can't do, what we can't do. He wants us to believe that. That we're nothing. He wants us to believe that our weaknesses will not allow us to do what God is expecting us to accomplish through him. That's what Satan wants. He wants us to believe that we're nothing. He wants us to believe that this case is a failure. He wants us to believe. But you know what? Satan is Satan. And he will twist the mind. He will put thoughts in your mind if you allow it. That's what Satan is here to do. Satan is here to make us believe that our weaknesses can never be, uh, can never, our weaknesses can never be strong because through, because in our weaknesses, God gives us strength, but Satan want us to believe that we can't do nothing. Satan want us to believe that, you know, well, this case, you see, you didn't win. Satan want us to think like that, but, but I, I decree and declare I'm not thinking like that because I know we serve a mighty God and God still sits up on that throne and nobody down here on earth is God. And there is a purpose and a reason and a season. And maybe it's not the season, although we wanted it to be the season, but in God's eyes, it wasn't the season. But we know that the season is coming. We've all had a season. We've all been in our season in one way or another. And we've all had to walk in darkness in one way or another. We've all had our share of trials and tribulations. Just being a black woman or a black man in this United States American system, we've had our trials and tribulations. And they haven't ended. And they won't end. Because if you are a believer, then you are going to suffer for Christ's sake. And sometimes it seems that the enemy overtakes the righteous. But no, God says that the righteous will suffer, but God will give you your crown. He will give you your due in due time. 
We got to keep praying. And maybe it's a test for us. See, God has already spoken, I believe, to Mr. Kelly. And now he's speaking to us. God is speaking to us now. Will we stay in the fight? Will we continue? Will we continue to trust God? Or will we give up and give in to Satan? Because that's what Satan wants. Satan wants us to give up. Satan wants to, us to think that we can never be victorious. Satan wants us to think that we cannot be victorious. We know it's some evil demonic people in these judicial systems. We know it's evil demonic people in the government. You could have an evil demonic neighbor living right next door to you. And maybe you tried all you could to get rid of the neighbor because you own your property and maybe they own theirs. And even renters, it takes time to get rid of some wicked, crooked, no good renters, right? But maybe you've done all you can. See, when we've done all we can, as human beings, physical, done all we can, we got to put it in God's hand. Everything needs to be laid at God's feet. Every single thing, even the hidden secrets that you think God don't know about have to be laid at God's feet. We got to lay it before him. My father, I lay everything before you. I cry out to you. I lay it before your feet, father. Because I've done all I can. But father, I need you to step in with your divine mercy, your divine healing and your divine hand. I need you to do a new thing. But Satan want us to wallow. Satan want us to cry. Oh, I can't do it. Oh, it's the end of the world. It's done, done, done. No, it's not. See, because God controls our future. God holds our future in his hand. God holds our life, our very own being in his hand. And when God says it's over, that's when I'm going to believe it's over. Because I'm not going to believe that God is going to allow this man to continue to be railroaded and swallowed up by the evil vows of people because they believed in things. And see, this is the thing. Think about the decades of the, the, the rumors that's been out here on Mr. Kelly, obstruction of justice, conspiracy, all of that. That has been out on this man for decades. And now it can be rested and thrown in the sea of forgiveness and never come up again. Never come up again. Because those, was, those were rumors. Lisa Van Allen went around for years, for decades. But she's been found to be in the court of law. Most of us knew, but in the court of law, it's public knowledge now. Public information. Tracy lied about her age and when she met him public information now and they went around even on surviving our kelly lying through their teeth we're not on the slow bus we have common sense and i know we do and this is no jab at nobody it's some smart people i've encountered smart people virtually So all I'm saying is don't buy into the negativity. Don't buy into the bafoule. Don't buy into the foolishness. Because that's what Satan wants is for you to lay down and wallow and give up and say, I can't do it. I don't know how to do it. I can't do it no more. That's what Satan would have you to do. Because that's what Satan wants. Remember, Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Destroying your, he wants to destroy your faith. He wants to destroy your motive, kill your, excuse me. He wants to destroy your faith. He wants to kill your motivation. He wants to steal your life. A Satan does. He wants to steal your life. And we can't let that happen. And they've even tried to steal. Look at this. Kill, steal, destroy, even R. Kelly. And they trying to take away this man's dignity with the stuff that's being said and I'm keeping it real and y'all can attack my video, my comments. You can say whatever you want to say, 
but it's not going to change my mind about the corrupt judicial system and the injustice that I've seen. And it's not just with R. Kelly, it's with other black men. We see them getting out, being exonerated, the innocent project. All of that has been helping them get out from crimes they never committed, sexual assault they never did. We see the truth. And I'm not going to believe that it's over for him. Just like I won't believe that it's over for somebody else that's been wrongfully convicted. And do I believe that God's going to hold people accountable in his time? Yes. Do I believe that it's some corrupt people? Yeah. I say it all the time in my videos that it's some corrupt people out here in the government, in politics. Your neighbor right next door could be that way. You could be battling with your neighbor, as I was saying earlier. It's a lot of stuff going on right now. But I'm not going to give Satan a victory in nothing. Because God is in control of Satan. He's a liar. He was kicked out of heaven. He wanted to be God. He wanted to be like God. He pursued the goal of trying to become God. God became his idea. Let me tell you something. These people that's out for R. Kelly and the music industry right now, R. Kelly is their idea. Can't you see how corrupt that is? Can't you see the obsessiveness of that? Can't you see that? They made it a goal for decades. They made it a goal. But God's not finished with R. Kelly yet. He's not finished with him. And I'm not going to believe that because he didn't get off on all of the charges that God's finished. God's not through with R. Kelly. See, nobody has control of their future, but God does. And we see it day in and day out. When folks get on here and start slandering and talking about people, they don't even have control of their own future. They sure don't. We've seen it. And I'm not going to mention names, but they didn't even have control of their own future when they were telling women that they could not get a man and all that stuff. I'm just keeping it real, people. I'm not here to bash nobody. I'm not here to, to I'm not here to get in arguments back and forth. I'm just saying because I see it and it's like people talking, people negative. There are people, I'm not saying, if you're not, it's not you. I'm just saying, in general, I've seen people talking negative, speaking negative, talking about Bon Jean. Some of them said she was the bomb. She was this. She was going to get it. She's not God. And this is nothing bad against her, but she is not God. I'm telling you, there needs to be a miracle. It's going to take a miracle and an act of God, his divine hand to swipe these negative, evil, wicked people. And he's looking at us now because he's saying, okay, my, my people that say they believe in me, excuse me, my people that say they believe in me, what, we, what, what are we going to do? We got to still have faith. We still have to have hope and not give up hope. Because when you give up hope, you give up everything. When you feel there's no way out, you give up everything. People have taken their own life because they felt there was no way out. God gives us a way out. Let me tell you something. R. Kelly may be behind prison walls, but it's the mentality. It's the mental state. Because I said that before, you can be behind, beyond prison walls, but your mental state is what's going to keep you together. Your mental state. And we got to pray for that. And he's in good spirits, but we still got to continue to pray. Because the mental state. And when they can attack your mental state, when they can attack your when they can attack your mental state, your spirituality. See, because they can because your body most of the time physically can heal. But when they can attack your mental state and your spirituality and your moral compass, when they can attack those things. 
But if they can't get to those things, they'll keep piling on and piling on and piling on and, and digging and, and jabbing and turning the screwdriver, just turning it until they strip it. They want to strip him of everything. That's what they'll do. That's what they will do. But he hasn't faltered. He's still there. Still breathing, still waking up. And you know what? He's quiet, pretty much. We didn't see him have no outburst in the courtrooms like some of them do. He didn't, he hasn't. And I pray the peace of God upon him and all understanding. All understanding. But I see... When I look at some of these cases where white folks have done things, their people don't act like that. They be thankful. They support them. They may be disappointed and say, we didn't get what we wanted, but you know what? Thank God he wasn't convicted on all those charges. I've seen white folks. They don't do the things that blacks do. Talking about this man said every negative thing in the book, want him to be under the jail, want him, people saying they're going to blow his head off, all types of stuff, violating his constitutional rights, digging into his prison records, all types of stuff. Now they have take confiscated his, his uh, commissary that people have honestly donated to. All types of stuff. And the man is still standing. Still waking up. Still can play basketball. He's limping now, but still can play basketball. And people still got so much negativity to say. It's sad. Our own people that would rather see another black man behind prison walls. And, and, and some people say they know who's on that tape and it's not an underage female. I didn't watch the tape and I don't know. And honestly, I, I really don't care because they didn't prove their case. Although he didn't get off on all accounts, they still didn't prove their case. They changed language. They changed words. It started going back to, it reminded me of the New York case where the Me, me, Too, me Too judge, Me Too movement judge denied every motion, everything she could deny, she denied. Overruled everything, you know, against the defense. She made sure all over a documentary. And when I go back and I didn't see the documentary because I, I, you know what? Some things just like, no, it's foolish because there's, a, I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. And if a person is honest, uh, uh, innocent to proven guilty, and there are times even when they're proven guilty, uh, even when they're innocent, they get guilty verdicts, even though they didn't prove their case. So this thing about innocent until proven guilty is almost like, should I really say that now? Or should I just say they're innocent? And then we'll see what happens in the courtroom because there are black men that have been innocent where the jury has came back with guilty verdicts when they were still innocent. And now they don't need to use white people. They could just use our own people. Yeah, he did it. Yeah, they did it. And then years later, decades later, if you ruined people's life and put a case on their on them. So when they go try to get a job and re-enter in society, they got they have a hard time because they got a case on their background. For all those decades. And people will always look at you side eyed. And it's really a sad day. It's very sad. And I've seen and watched, yes. Watch people say all type of negative stuff about this man. But yet and still, when they get caught up, they want mercy on them. They want you to support them. They got GoFunds be going. They want you to support what they do. And I'm not, I seen Willie D. He said some stuff. And just recently, he had something in his title. Was I don't know if it was a headliner to get people's attention. But he probably hasn't read not one transcript. Hasn't went to not one case, one trial, but yet still you got so much to say. But you have a criminal background too. But see, that's not how we supposed to be doing things. Because they the first one. Let me tell you something. And it's not the bash on him. Because I, I, I was like, the ghetto boys, 
But then I started hearing that Phil Scott, you know, the guy that got that channel, him too. They all got something negative to say. Like they walking on, you know, but see, people that live in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Because the people that live in glass houses probably got a lot of broken windows. But they won't tell you that. Because, and they don't, they're not willing to do their research either. All they've been doing is listening to what the media says. One-sided. One-sided. That's why I could never be a journalist. Because I wouldn't be able to do what they do. I would have to tell the truth. Give facts for both sides. Equality. Make sure the scales are where they need to be. Not so tilted against someone. Because there's always another side to the story. And that's why I say when you tell your story, tell the God-given truth. Not my truth, but tell the truth. And now that it's come out, those people, they probably going to suffer some losses. Because they didn't have to lie all those years just to get a bag, just to get capped, get to get paid on interviews. And now look. See, the tables are turning. It's slow, but they're turning. Because I've always said in my videos, whether you follow me or subscribe to my channel or not, God will expose everything. He's busting it wide open. And he's busting it open for, open for the, not just for us, because we knew a lot of things, but busting it wide open for the world to see. We shouldn't give up on R. Kelly. And there are some people out here that have, Really giving up on the man. Have so much negative to say about him. But I'm not. All right. Like I said, I, I, I'm not even a, I'll say it like this. I don't, when I see injustice, it grieves me. It breaks my heart to see injustice. And I've told people, I have seven brothers. And when there's a real victim, I stand up for them too. And if you all have seen my video recently where this, uh, she was a real victim that has to pay $150,000 restitution because she killed her abuser, her perpetrator, her trafficker. She's a real victim. He only became a victim because he was killed. And you know what? I don't know that man's background, the deceased. I don't know. And he left some children behind. And maybe she didn't really understand that uh, defense, the law of defense, the affirmative law of defense uh, in Des Moines, Iowa. Maybe she didn't understand that. So she waived it. She was 15 years old. But I'm going to be honest with you. If I was in that situation, and I know, let me tell you something. I got to value me over that perpetrator. It's me that, either me or him. And I'm keeping it real. You don't have to like it, but it's me, either me or him. So I understand. And I think that's a messed up law there. And they're trying to get a bill passed, get a, uh, get it put on the bill, uh, on the, um, get it put on the ballot to change it, where they would have a um, safe haven law uh, that would give criminal immunity to situations like that. You know what I'm saying? But it's not just, uh, it's just, it's just uh, the injustice is not just R. Kelly, but this is the major one. We've seen the worst case scenario and that's why it's big, but there's other injustices. Anybody serving 30, 40, any, let me tell you, any time behind bars when they're innocent is wrong. It's wrong in our American quote unquote, so-called judicial system. And when we allow social media, social media platforms to take over our judicial system and what's right when it's wrong, that's a real problem. And instead of us blaming and bashing, what can we do to help change it? What can we do? What can we do collectively to help change it? Because I don't know why people have hate in their heart. I don't have hate in my heart. And I don't know why people do. That's why I have to stay away from a lot of those channels.
that are sitting up here bashing and wishing this man dead and under the jail. And they got so much hate in their heart and they the first ones to put God in their mouth, but they got so much hate in their heart and they're so angry, willing to blow somebody's head off for what? When you don't even know the whole facts because it came out seven, not guilties. But you was willing to blow that man's head off. Tasha Kay, all those people. Such a sad day for black people that are participating in foolishness, that are participating in non-compassion. They don't even have mercy, but they'll be the first ones that want you to have mercy on them when they get caught up. They want you to have mercy on them. But see, the devil plays dirty. Don't you know the devil plays dirty? And we know the devil plays dirty. The devil plays dirty. And we realize it. That's why we can't give up the fight. And maybe there is a reason. And God's got to work it all the way out. So it'll never come back. Thrown in the sea of forgiveness. So it can never come back again. And I just want you all to be encouraged. I know, you know, I just want you to be encouraged. That's what I'm going to say. Please be encouraged. For the ones that salute, support, stand up straight, boots on the ground, uh, whoever you are that's supporting R. Kelly, that hasn't given up. May God heal your broken heart. May he control your emotions. May once you get through shedding your tears, that you will come out stronger. Because see, the devil wants us to be blurry eyed. He wants us to not be able to see the forest for the trees. He wants us not to be able to stand up and clearly speak and clearly be that beacon of light and hope. He wants our light to dim. He doesn't want our light to shine anymore. He wants us to be defeated. He wants us to grow weary and faint. But the word of God says we can't grow weary. We can never faint. We got to keep running this race. He wants you to give up your spot in the race. And he figured if you give it up and everybody starts following suit, then R. Kelly will give up. And his legal team will give up. We can't give up our spot in the race. We got to keep staying. If that's our spot, don't give it up. Fight for your spot in the race and don't give up. 